Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, good afternoon, and thank you for joining um, our webinar today. My name is Jameson Reynolds. I'm the Director of Marketing Strategy with the Library Corporation. Uh, you're joining us for what is a beginning, a new series that we are going to be launching here at the Library Corporation. Uh, we are going to be providing Webinar Wednesday, where every Wednesday, we're actually doing it at 2 o'clock Eastern uh, today, but moving forward, we will actually be moving it to 3 o'clock Eastern. But every Wednesday, we are going to be providing a webinar on various topics that may be of interest to you. Um, some of these topics will be uh, directly led by a uh, product partner, such as today with Ian uh, Downey from uh, Patron Point. Uh, there will be other sessions that we will do with product partners um, as well, as well as product owners, members of the TLC team, uh, where we will actually speak about various topics some may be straight on um, uh, software trainings. Others will be more conceptual in tone as far as where the industry is going and maybe how our products fit into that. But before I get any further, I um, pass this over to Ian. Um, if we could, I would like to introduce who TLC is to you, um, as you may not be aware of who TLC is. Um, TLC is the Library Corporation. We were founded in 1974. Uh, we are still under the same private ownership as the family who founded our company. Um, we are in over 5,500 locations worldwide. And if there's one thing in our in industry we may have a great reputation for, it is the customer service that we provide to our customers. Now, what we do in the library uh, um, environment, in the library uh, universe, is we are known for um, ILS platforms. Uh, we are known for library.solution. LS2, as well as Carl. You may know Carl, Carl Connect, um, and some of the layers that come with that. Uh, we also have a STEM and EdTech line. Uh, we are also the primary um, stockholder in uh, TechLogic, which is an automated material handling and RFID company. And we also provide data services. Um, one of our data services uh, that you may be aware of right now is a data service called eBibliophile, which does work on getting a uh, full RDAIs, full mark records in for eBooks that you may be acquiring at this time. That's a product that actually came to, uh, we've had for many years that has drawn some attention in the last month due to the situation that many of us find ourselves in. So if anybody has any questions or, or comments or anything they would like um, further information on, um, you are always welcome to go to tlcdelivers.com and any of our staff would be more than happy to reach out to you. Now on that note, I'm going to pass to Ian Downey who is uh, with Patron Point. So Ian, at this point, if you'd like to take it away, please do. Fantastic, thanks Jameson. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen with you guys. Hopefully you can see my presentation. There we go. Okay, hopefully everyone can see that, great. So. So thank you, Jameson, um, and thanks to our partners at TLC for having us along today. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Jameson said, my name is Ian Downey, uh, the Vice President of Growth here at Patron Point. Um, excited to join the webinar, obviously the first in the series, so hopefully we get the guys off to a good start. Um, the aim of today really is to give you guys an overview of how marketing automation is being used in public libraries. Um, this isn't a demo of the product. Obviously, if anyone would like a demo, we'd be very happy to set one up for your team. Uh, we can set web demos up, no problem. Uh, we have some special promotions running right now. So if anyone would like a, a demo, we can talk to you about those promotions at the time. So what is Patron Point? Um, well, Patron Point is a fully featured marketing automation platform. Um, it's delivered as an online solution and it hooks up to your ILS and other data sources. The idea behind Patron Point really is to provide public libraries with a similar tool set and processes that are used by businesses around the world to drive their customer engagement. And I think what we're seeing is that libraries waking up to the opportunities that marketing automation provides is, is meaning that we're probably one of the fastest growing vendors in the library side right now. So marketing around the world is changing. Um, you know, many of you will be familiar with kind of broadcasting messages out to customers, um, but that's really old school. And what's changing in marketing around the world is what's known as narrow casting or personalizing content and making, it, making sure it's more relevant to its recipients. 
The challenge is how do we do that personalization at scale? Um, we need tools to help us do that. And that's exactly what marketing automation is about. Uh, it's be, been used by businesses around the world for a while. And some of you may have used tools like uh, email tools like Constant Contact or MailChimp for email platforms. But, you know, they're clearly, you know, they work very well and, and fair play. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. But what they're missing is a connectivity with the data and the workflow that marketing automation offers. So we've seen libraries really taking marketing seriously over the last five to 10 years, so much so that we're actually now seeing for the first time um, a number of our customers actually having dedicated marketing teams, librarians with marketing in their job title or community engagement. So libraries are clearly embracing libraries, which is exciting. Um, the challenge is, and I think something they realize is that whilst many libraries understand all the fantastic things you can do in a library, the challenge is that they admit that customers don't. You know, not all the customers are aware of all the great things you can do in a public library. Hence, that's the need to communicate with them and to message them and to market your services to them. So we're now in an era of big data. We get that. Um, and marketing automation is all about data. And once we've got the data and, you know, libraries have got plenty of it, you know, the challenge is that it's in lots of different silos. So we'll talk about the aggregation of the data in a minute. But having got that data, there's really two avenues you can proceed down. Um, the first route, which is automation, which allows you to do things like, you know, when it's somebody's birthday, wish them a, wish them a happy birthday. When they join the library, send them a sequence of emails welcoming them to the library. When it's time to renew their library card, use that date to drive a renewal reminder. All that type of things that you could imagine. Very, very basic automation, very, very powerful um, and used by businesses around the world. The second opportunity um, is to take that data and allow you to segment your customer base. So basically using that data to target specific groups of your audience. For example, if you want to drive ebook usage, you know, being able to know which of your customers are using ebooks heavily and which of them are not, being able to target those that are not with a message to encourage them to try out your ebook collection for the first time. So it's about understanding how to target them. And as it says there, getting the right, per right message to the right person at the right time. So gathering the data, um, you know, to really get what we call a unified view of your patron, you need to bring data in from a wide range of sources. So with Patron Point, you can bring data in from, you know, pretty much all of the resources you have available um, because, you know, you'll have customers that sit at home basically using your digital resources. Certainly now um, in the current climate, you're in a normal mode. You will have people that come into the library every day and will use your computers, but don't check anything out. You'll have people that attend your events and your programming that haven't used any of your digital stuff. So you have lots of customers using different services within the library. Creating a single view of how people are using your resources is really an important step in being able to understand how to promote services to your audience. So once we've got that data, we've got the view of the customers, we can then go down the automation and segmentation routes that was on the previous screen. Now, Patron Point is a multi-channel platform, so it's not all about sending emails. Um, you can also use SMS text messaging, uh, which a number of our customers use. In certain circumstances, that's a, a better way to communicate with people, certainly for key messages, things that are time critical. You can also, with Patron Point and other marketing platforms, create content and push content onto the internet. And by that, I mean creating pop-ups and web forms. So forms on your website that are for things like newsletter sign up. You know, you'll see this on other people's websites where you visit the site, and as you browse around, something will pop up and say, hey, don't forget to register for our newsletter or hey, have you seen all these great events we're running? So those tools are available, part of Patron Point and allowing you to engage and capture information about website visitors. As with any marketing tool and any platform these days, there is a suite of analytics available through dashboards and online reporting. Uh, and of course, you know, understanding how you're doing. Some things will work well, other things not so well. And it's important to review performance and tweak and make changes um, and then repeat. So very much a cyclical process. 
So I mentioned getting data from a wide range of sources. Um, obviously, the ILS holds a good deal of the information we're going to need to do most of this. As we look at the use cases, which I'm going to move on to, you'll start to see where some of this data is coming from. Um, so bringing data in from the ILS is obviously key, um, but we also bring data in um, from a wide range of other sources. So things like ebook platforms, for example, uh, we're starting to see a trend where you know a number of public libraries have multiple ebook platforms. So to be able to launch content or remind customers about how to access this stuff, it's important that you don't get people that already heavily use one of these platforms and tell them all about it, because all you're going to do there is tick them off, they're going to hit the unsubscribe button, and then your communication with them is over. So it's very important to understand who needs to know about this stuff and how they're using it. Um, databases, another area where you know it's a significant investment for libraries to make in some of these resources. So to be able to track usage, to be able to understand how well they're being used um, and promote them to people that perhaps haven't used them so far. Maybe they're not interested or maybe they just didn't know. So here's a chance to use the data, push the messaging and try and drive usage. Um, events and booking systems, we bring data in from those systems too. Uh, a lot of our customers use uh, Patron Point to promote uh, their events and programming. And we'll look at opportunities to do that in some of your regular notices um, and the opportunity to obviously attract not just cardholders. Uh, so not just library cardholders come to these events. You know, many of our customers around the world have events that it can be accessed by people that don't currently hold a library card. So, of course, that, that opens up the opportunity for you to capture information for events and registration bookings for people that don't have that card. So then within Patron Point, you're able to then nurture those relationships um, to continually reach out to these people to try and educate them all the other things they can do with the library with the goal of trying to have them sign up for a library card. So events and bookings, um, and not just, not just events and, and room bookings, sorry, but also PC bookings. And we have customers that have a range of other things that they loan within the library, things like tablets or Wi-Fi hotspots. Any of that data can be brought into Patron Point and used to segment your audience. Uh, and we mentioned the website as well. So obviously the ability to track visitors to your website, to track visitors to specific pages and use that information to then build up a picture of people's interests, um, but also trigger, as we'll see later, to be able to trigger some workflow based on that activity. So what can we do with that data? We can send emails and we, send, we can send SMS messages, as we said. Um, newsletters, something else very popular, a lot of libraries have newsletters, and again, we'll touch on that later on in the presentation. Um, surveys, uh, and basically a survey is a form, okay, where you're going to be basically asking people questions and they're going to give you responses. The nice thing about patron point survey forms is that those responses lay within the system and are stored centrally within patron point. So of course, one that, what that then gives you is the ability to do something about those survey responses to then aggregate people that answered specific questions, specific ways, and then maybe re-reach back out to them to do some follow-ups. So it's not data sitting in a silo in another system. It all sits within the same place. And we mentioned web forms, and we'll explore web forms in a bit um, when we come to look at uh, things like new patron sign-up forms, et cetera, but lots of opportunities to create content on your website and have that interact with Patron Point and your customers. So many libraries, as I say, using Patron Point around the world is just a sample of them. Um, there are clearly a range of scales here and a range of geographies. You know, we've got libraries from the US, Canada, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Um, People like Brooklyn Public Library, you know, one of our larger urban systems with their 66 branches, right the way through to our smaller libraries, like one of my favorites, which is Syosset Library in Public Library in New York, a single building library. Um, also Consortia as well. You can see Clevenet listed there and Nassau Consortia, both, both with, you know, multiple libraries. And within a consortia environment, it basically means that, you know, libraries get to promote their own brand. Uh, within the group setup, which is something that, that many libraries often struggle with, certainly at the smaller end when they're part of a larger group. So that's that's where we are right now. And as I say, we're growing, you know, many libraries joining us every month. So let's have a think about the customer journey. Um, as I say, we haven't invented marketing and we haven't invented marketing automation, clearly. We're not making such great claims. But effectively, you know, looking at how other membership organizations 
take their customers on a journey. You know, so we need to think about this. Is you know, if you Google customer journey, you'll see lots of customer journeys where the end goal is a one-off sale to sell a product or a service. Clearly, what we're talking about here in a membership organization is a journey, um, and it's an ongoing cycle of joining, engagement, and then renewing that membership. Um, so think about organizations. One of the things that we like to do is look at other industries that have that similar challenge and look at best practice. So organizations like a gym, you know, so my gym, the challenges they have, they want to promote the gym to the community. They want to sign people up for the gym. They want to then, over the course of their year of membership, make sure that those members get value from their membership to make sure that all the customers are aware of all the great things they can do at the gym and encourage participation to drive usage, to make the renewal conversation a no brainer, to make the renewal conversation given. Why would I not want to renew my gym membership because I get such great value from it? And that's no different to the library experience. So the library customer journey, obviously very similar. Um, you have a challenge of attracting people from the community to join the library. Once they join, you then have a joining process. Once they are a member, you want to engage them throughout their membership. And at the end of that process, to renew their membership. So effectively, you know, that's the, that's the challenge for a public library, which, you know, very similarly mirrors what, what a gym or other membership organizations may see. So I'm not going to talk today about the attraction piece. That's very much a marketing conversation we can have. What I'd like to focus on today is the concepts of joining the library, engaging and renewing customers. We can talk to you about attract in a separate session. So in terms of um, joining the library, you know, one of the challenges here is to understand, you know, you've got to make it easy for people to join. You've got to make that process easy. So the three challenges we want to try and overcome is how do we get people to join the library simply and how do we automate as much of that process as we can and then how do we make that process educational for them so they actually start out with the best possible footing understanding all the great stuff they can do in the library so the first thing we'll give you as a patron point customer is a online registration form where your customers can join the library now that form can be branded it can look exactly like the one you may or may not have already it could be a completely new look and feel it's basically a form which is embedded on your website which allows people to join the library it mirrors your existing workflow and policies so by that i mean if you have different types of cards that people can sign up for then obviously those options will be available to them on that form and the workflow depending on which card they select the workflow will mirror that in the back end we create the record in the ils um, and once that record is created, we trigger a welcome email workflow. Now, what that means is, and I'm going to show you how that works in a second, is rather than sending a one-time email, say, hey, welcome to the library, our experience shows us that a series of emails gets you a better result. Simple reason is that actually the library does so much good stuff that to cram it all at decent enough level of detail into a single email, you'd be scrolling down the page for days. So what we found is it's much better to break that email welcome sequence into chunks to tell the library story over a series of different number of emails. And again, that's entirely up to you how you break that story down, how many emails your welcome sequence consists of and the cadence between those emails. So within Patreon Point, you have a, a workflow builder. Um, so the first thing that happens is when somebody joins the library, they fall into a bucket called new customer. So immediately that record is created in the ILS. People fall into this category. Um, this is just an example of a workflow that we build. I mean, basically every customer that goes live with Patron Point, we build with them uh, a welcome sequence. Reason for that is it basically gets you to value very quickly and it gives, you, gives us a great way to show you how Patron Point fits together to allow you, because you can build these sequences for anything else in the library. It doesn't just have to be for people joining the library, it can be for anything. So here's an example where when somebody joins the library, immediately that record's created, that person will receive the standard welcome email from the director, which will basically probably, in most libraries will look, I'll show you an example of one of our customers in a minute, but it will basically say, hey, thanks for joining the library, here's some cool stuff you can do with our library. So that's the first thing. Um, what we then have in this sequence is we wait three days, and again, that period can be defined by you, and we send a second email that says, 
you know, here are some cool events and programs you can you can take part in at our library and here's how to register. So that will probably provide a link to your website where people can sign up or find out about some more of the events and programming that's going on. In parallel with that, what we can do is if people visit your website, so depending on what pages of the website they visit, they can then automatically be sent out another email, follow up email based on their interest. So if somebody visits your digital page, for example, they could receive the digital info pack email, which is giving them some more in-depth understanding of how to access your digital resources. Uh, if they visit the kids page, for example, then send them the kids pack and similarly for the makerspace, etc. So really giving them stuff that's interested to them. So if I don't visit the kids page, I don't get the kids pack email because I'm clearly not interested in that part of the service the library offers. So the key is that all of this stuff I'm educated with over a series of emails. If I then click to the website to find out more, I get a more in-depth follow up. So what you're really trying to do here is educate everybody right at the start of that relationship. They get a consistent welcome experience. So this is an example, Skokie Public Library, one of our customers uh, in Illinois. This is their online sign up form and they have a sequence of emails that they've designed which go out over a period I think of a week. Uh, the first one is a general welcome with some things that are happening in the library. The second one is around some uh, spaces and places in the library. The next one is around some of the events and opportunities to engage with the library. I like this one. Um, this hero is some of their staff. It gives a kind of a little bit of background on, in terms of some of the staff that you might meet as a new customer when you visit the library. And then finally, um, an email about some of the digital assets that are available to you as a cardholder. So everybody that joins the Skokie Public Library gets that sequence of emails over a period of time. Uh, some of it will be of interest to them, some of it won't. Um, and again, the key is that every, of clearly everyone isn't interested in the same things. Something that really adds a good degree of power to this, I mentioned earlier, the ability to make this a simple process for people to join. So we have launched a service called Verify, which is an address verification service. So the way that works is basically from the registration form, what we do is we can do GIS geocoding, so address looking up. Uh, and verifying the address, verifying the patron lives at that street address. Um, if they pass verification, we can create a full patron record in the ILS and trigger that email welcome sequence I showed you. If their address doesn't verify, what you can do is create an e-card, so give them temporary access maybe to digital resources um, and send a separate email to them asking them to bring ID into the library um, with address proof so they can convert their card into a full card. So ideally, you know, for people that only ever want to use digital resources, you know, this gives them the ability they don't then have to come in downtown with their address to basically join the library. So right now we've got a number of customers in the current climate that want to give a wide section of the community access to their digital resources, so we're able to offer them an e-card sign-up form, which would basically go down this right-hand route. Uh, I guess once we come out of this pandemic, then we will be able to switch on the verification sequence for them, which will then allow them to convert those e-cards, assuming the address matches up um, to a verified full patron account. So at the other end of the cycle, I'll go to this bit and then we'll come back to look at the engagement in between. So renewing library cards, you know, most, most of our customers have a card that expires, you know, maybe every two or three years. Um, some libraries don't have that, which is, a, you know, obviously you don't have this challenge, but like a gym, you know, libraries need to remind people to renew their cards. It's good for us to keep as many card holders as we possibly can. You know, I think if you ask any business, it always costs more to attract a new card holder. Than it does to retain the ones you have. So let's keep as many of our card holders active as we can. Um, when we look at the engage, I'll show you some ideas on how you can track people who are potentially lapsing as library card members. So to basically, if their library card usage stops and drops off, tackle it then rather than wait for them to ask them to renew their card. So there's two tactics. But for those people whose card is about to expire, we have a solution. The first one, which is basically using that same sequence I showed you for welcome to trigger a customized sequence of renewal reminders. So the way that could work is basically, for example, here's, an, here's, here's a case where first one, T minus 60 days. So the renewal date minus 60 days an automated email will go out to the person to, to remind them their card is due to renew and explaining how to do it. So in a, a standard model, we would say, hey, George, your card's expiring this date. 
come down to the library with two forms of address um, and we'll renew your card and we're giving them a hook here and just reminding them some of the cool stuff they can do at the library to renew their card. Um, if they don't renew that opportunity, they will receive another one in the sequence, the second email, 30 days out from the renewal date with a different sales hook, a different option for things they can do at the library to try and get them to renew that card. Obviously, if they do renew the card at this instance, they never see the second reminder. So we don't tick them off repeatedly asking them to renew, but this way they get the second reminder. And then again, if they haven't done it after 30 days, maybe you could remind them again, 10 days out to renew their card. So automated sequence, the goal is here is trying to renew as many cards as we possibly can. Again, Verify can be brought to bear on this process too, um, perhaps with more impact, because obviously this applies to all of your customers rather than just the small number of new library card holders signing up every year. So the way this works obviously is meaning that your existing card holders do not need to come downtown if they pass verification with address for you to be able to renew their library card. So automatically, X days before the card renewal, and again, this process is going to be defined with each of you individually as libraries because policies change around the around the market we go to verify the address automatically if that address is verified and we know that a person lives at that address we can send a congratulations email and update their ILS expiration date so basically move their renewal date forward two years three years whatever your policy is if they don't pass verification they simply get that renewal reminder sequence reminding them to come in and bring ID Bring, bring address and renew their card X days, Y days, Z days before renewal. So ideally we're looking at this, we've a service we launched quite recently, uh, early indications are that we can renew up to around 80% of customers cards can be renewed uh, without them having to come into the library, which obviously saves an awful lot of time, uh, both staff time and customer time. And it's just a much better experience for them to renew their card. Why wouldn't you? So we've covered the the sort of cradle to grave, the life, the birth from the welcome emails and the grave, the renewal sequence, we've done that. Now let's look at what happens in between. So really what we want to try and do here is look at how do we engage customers? The challenge is that obviously we can't send and we don't want to send a broadcast message. We don't want to tell everybody everything because we're going to be sending a lot of emails. We're going to tick a lot of people off in the interim. And last thing we want to do is unsubscribe customers from our correspondence. So there's lots of ways of doing this um, and every marketing automation platform offers the ability and patron points no different to track the activity of everybody and assign a score uh, to people based on their engagement so for example and again totally optional and every library can use this differently you can assign a number score to certain activities so for example if people check out a book give them a point if they check out and download an ebook, give them a point. If they attend an event, give them a point. So the picture is here is that every one of your customers will have an, a score attached to them based on what they do with the library. The key is then is to use that information to track engagement over time. And that engagement can be looked at as a, as a whole. So based on all of your customer base or on segments of your customer base. So what you're trying to do is see is how effective is your marketing? How effective are you at basically pushing messaging out to customers and bending the needle? How can you get those guys that didn't download any ebooks before to start checking out your digital stuff? How can you get people registering for events for the first time? How can you get your new customers doing more with you sooner? Um, all that stuff. So within Patreon Point, what we do is we calculate the last activity date based on all of those inputs. So based on physical checkouts, digital checkouts, streaming stuff, whatever you're putting into Patron Point will calculate a last activity date. So what that allows you to do is then basically target people where the last activity date was more than X days. So these are people that are likely to become inactive. So as I said earlier, rather than waiting for them to renew their library card to re-engage them, you can, you can automate that process if you wish to basically set up a segment as I showed you for welcome. So where somebody's last activity date, for example, is 100 days or more, send them a reminder, re reminder email one of something cool that they can do at the library. If they're still inactive after 30 days, send them another one with some, some other reminder, some other cool stuff they can do at the library. Businesses do this all the time. This is the kind of thing you will see your major supermarkets doing when you join their programs. 
So for example, in Walmart, if you don't buy anything at Walmart, either in store or online for a period, they will start sending you coupons to spend in the store or online to try and re-engage you. So clearly libraries don't have those coupons to sell, but basically giving you opportunities to use data to reach out to people. All of the data is gonna be personalized. Um, all of the content is gonna be relevant to people based on that data. So as I said earlier, do not send how to download a book from Overdrive to the guy that downloaded 20 books from Overdrive last week. You know, so understanding the data, using that data to basically make sure your messages are on point and relevant. A big opportunity that our customers find is the opportunity to take your library notices, so your holds pickup notices, your courtesy notices, your overdues, your fines notices, and turn them from a text message into uh, a cross-channel promotional tool. Um, I'll give you an example of that in a second. Um, these are the most frequent emails that go out from you to your most loyal and active customers. Um, and at the moment, most of them are just plain text. So Patron Point offers you the opportunity to turn them into HTML, trackable, um, clickable, actionable emails, um, which can be used to drive awareness and click-throughs to websites or forms or anything else to try and get people engaged with the library. So this is an example of a current hold pickup notice. I'm sure you know some of you will be familiar with this type of format. You know, it, it, given all of the time that libraries spend on their website, their social media, and all the other marketing they do, I think we can do better here. So this is the current scenario, and this is the type of thing that you can use Patron Point to do. So effectively, you can see here, you know, an opportunity to brand the message. Um, for example, to promote a new mobile app, if that's something you want within a banner. Again, everything you see on the right hand side here is customizable. So this is just a, a kind of a, a visual of the kind of the art of the possible, so to speak. Um, personalized, uh, maybe clickable through to Google Maps, potentially, if this is um, in a multi-branch system. You can see you've got jacket art here that's pulled from the catalog. Um, and some instruction here around how that pick up, how the whole is going to be collected. Um, you can see here as well the opportunity to promote events on the same hold pickup notice. Now, though, these events could be linked to this location. They don't have to be system wide. So in a multi branch system, these events can be branch specific. Um, they could also be content specific as well. So, you know, if this was a children's title, for example, you might want to promote children's events on this pickup notice. Um, opportunity to promote other content on here, maybe and obviously link through to social media, et cetera. So, you know, I think you can see this is a massive improvement upon this in terms of a marketing opportunity, but also a branding job, um, raising brand awareness, because obviously this notice is gonna look part of a set. Your welcome email will look similar, your renewal notices will look similar, and all your other emails, your newsletters and whatever else is gonna look like a, a set of stationery that come out. It's all template driven, and it's all gonna look very professionally designed. So obviously, as part of notices, another option, another something else that libraries would want to do is to drive uh, their promotion, their digital resources. Uh, I mentioned it earlier. So being able to try and drive usage, but also measure uh, the uptake and the success of the marketing. So the return on in your investment in marketing time. So being able to see if you have 100 people that have never checked out anything from Overdrive, send them a message a month later, how many of those people are still haven't downloaded anything from Overdrive. So it's trying to understand what the uh, effect of your marketing is, not just how many people have read the email, which is great, and you see all that too, and how many people open the email and all that stuff, uh, what devices they opened it on, the, you know, how many click-throughs have they got and all that good stuff, but actually what you're looking for is how many of them have actually gone on to download something from Overdrive, uh, and you'll get to see that too. Something which is obviously also important is uh, making sure that what you're uh, giving them is the option to opt in to receive kind of, I suppose, uh, what would you call this? We would call this kind of, I suppose, curated content for them based on their interests. So effectively what Patron Point gives you is the opportunity to create a form on your website where people can sign up for notifications from you and perhaps select titles or subjects or things that they're interested in based on the content you're sending out. So give you an idea of who to send what to. Um, so things like staff picks, for example, we have a number of customers who send, send staff picks out. So customers 
give their customers the chance to sign up to receive those notifications and then those notices are pushed out through patron point to the people that have signed up and obviously people can unsubscribe too from those services events promotions we've already touched on uh, we've got some really uh, very simple tools that we can use to promote events and again just to try and drive attendance at these but also track uh, what the uptake is uh, and look at monitoring engagement on people who perhaps haven't attended events previously um, something nice that I think you could do is actually use patron point as a survey tool to ask people about the types of events they would like to see you run in an upcoming uh, period uh, newsletters many libraries send out newsletters what we'll find though is that you know whilst libraries have gone from a paper-based newsletter to a print-based newsletter what we're seeing is that a lot of these newsletters there's no need for them to all be the same so you don't broadcast the same newsletter to everybody here's one example of what a newsletter might look like coming up from patron point again the design is entirely up to you the, the idea is though that you know if you're promoting a, your new mobile app this is a good place to put it in your newsletter but if you know that I've already downloaded the mobile app then don't tell me that again talk to me about something else in that space so again the opportunity to personalize the content based on that so what you're going to see with all of this hopefully is happy engaged patrons you know this is all about a journey of discovery it's about welcoming your new customers and educating them about all the cool stuff they can do at the library taking your existing customers and engaging them to a higher degree in things they perhaps didn't know about but things they perhaps are interested in about and then making sure you make that renewal of the library card process an obvious choice for them and easy for them to do and in some cases completely automated so that's the end of the presentation um, I've got some questions that I've just received here so I'm just going to go through a couple of these um, question does patron point have any mapping tools um, so we have the GIS option. Um, so basically we have the ability to take a shape file and to be able to put people into an area. So for a consortia, we have the ability to look at where somebody lives based on a form they fill out. So if they say, I live here in a consortial setup, which library should I join in the consortia? Um, in a standalone library, when they type their address in, you know, if your library is in New York and somebody puts in a Los Angeles street address, then the answer is no, you're, you're not entitled to a library card with us. So yes, we can use mapping in that context. In terms of being able to take other data from Patron Point and export it, we have a tool that we use, which basically uh, is accessible to us through, it produces a Google map. So you can create a free online Google map using our data. Um, and it's a proper Google map you can zoom in and zoom out you can do satellite view street view type thing and basically put pins on the map based on the results that come from patron point from our reports and dashboards so yes there is a there is a mapping tool within that that's more of a strategic piece than a, a kind of a tactical day-to-day -day communications tool um, so patron point very firmly sits within that engagement piece you know we do not see ourselves as a, a marketing consultancy that's for other people we are all you know professional marketers but that's not what we're about we're a software company offering a platform that helps you engage with your customers um, other questions around pricing uh, the product is priced based on a subscription um, and that subscription is based on the population served by your library um, there is also a setup fee uh, a one-time setup fee and an annual subscription so I don't see any other questions here. Um, obviously, in terms of uh, other bits and pieces, no, I think that's us. So, Jameson, I'm going to hand back over to you if you want to wrap us up, and if there's anything else that uh, that you want to do before we finish, then feel free. But thank you everyone for joining us, and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions beyond this, then my contact details are on the slide deck. Uh, please visit our website at patronpoint.com if you want to find out anything else or get in contact with us. Thanks for joining us. Okay, hey, Ian, thank you very much for uh, that very informative uh, webinar on Patreon Point. Uh, that, that was the first in what will be a series of webinars provided by the Library Corporation. Um, up next, uh, next Wednesday, will be an actual full uh, training on LS2 inventory. So if uh, inventory is something that you find interesting, either as an LS customer, or just something you would like to see compared to the system that you currently use. Uh, you are more than welcome to register for that webinar. And Samantha, one of our instructors, 
uh, we'll be walking everybody through that. Uh, thank you every, everybody uh, very much for joining this webinar. I hope everybody has a very uh, healthy and safe rest of the day, week, and into the future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.